let's jump to another gal that I think has definitely been checked out before and is very famous. Robin, um, our Swedish pop uh, savior, I guess. In a way. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's interesting to think about Robin because I know she's been famous for what, like 20 years now over that 25, mm-hmm. almost. She's in early crazy. 30. And uh, yeah. And she started what? 95, 95 was her first album. 97. The way she carried her career, she was kind of like the iconoclast version of Britney Spears. You know, she like shied away from and didn't want to do the the big label deals and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And she kind of just went on her own way. And yeah, I actually wasn't really familiar with, with her music. You know, from the time, I think that's partly because she inherently moved away from making mainstream pop music. You know, alternative mm-hmm. pop, music, right? So it's interesting because she's really famous, but also like the people's exposure to her i think really depends on like how old you were like where you were when when she was making and what kind of music she was making you know it's a really interesting career but it's like her first album in what eight years i think yeah first first solo album eight years she's released a couple eps and been featured a couple times um you know it's interesting because i know i know some of the songs like dancing on my own show me love um which was her first like real hit back in the late 90s um and call your girlfriend. I, I'd heard all those before, but I never had really like explored her music and, and like her catalog that deep. Cause I, I think this, like her pop music, like I think most pop music isn't super appealing to me all the time. And I usually only check it out if it's something that I feel like I, I should know for the pot or for the culture um, going on around me, the culture, hashtag culture. Um, but it's interesting to see, like you said, like she's like the polar opposite of Britney Spears. Or I, I was thinking like Ariana Grande as some like a pop star that's released an album this year that's similar. That uh, take for sure. I mean, in terms of critical reception, I think Sweetener and uh, Robin Honey. Or Honey are the probably the two best pop albums of the year. Yeah, Very and I, I think they they both bring a lot of different like substance to it and in different ways. Like Sweetener. Um, I think is is a more classic sort of pop album, whereas Robin, I think, stylistically pushes herself and tries different things. Um, I mean, this is like it's like house, like Swedish house music mixed with like I don't know, like synth pop. Like it definitely, definitely depends on on wh- what she's trying to say, and it also feels like her albums have an arc to it, whereas like Ariana's, um, it's just kind of like song here, song here, maybe not a lot of continuity among it um so it, you know in a way it's kind of like robin approaches this as more of like an artist and i think ariana more is like a pop star if that makes sense no it makes uh, a ton of sense. I mean, again robin chose not to be a pop star right pop star on her own terms right and it, you see her in the music as well so what what do you think of honey as an album yeah i think i mean you listen and even if it's like like it's overly synthy it's not like super like big sound or anything it's certainly there's no pharrell production on here like there wasn't sweetener <laughs> yeah you know listening and even if like, like i couldn't get into every beat i couldn't get into every song i still appreciate songwriting you know mm-hmm. it's kind of like a lot of interesting stuff going on with the heartbreak and uh i mean she actually had i think one of her like her close producer and longtime friend passed away and that kind of contributed to the uh mm. the hiatus. so the next a lot of that comes out on the album but then you know, I think two thirds through, she makes like between the lines, which is a really a beat song, much more electronic sounding. I know that sounded really cool too, but mm-hmm. weird because like the album was like built up to that moment, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, even though I I, I didn't love every song, I just I, in terms of the production, but it was not bad production. Just wasn't you know my cup of tea per se. But I think the songwriting is quite strong once again. So you know, I think this is kind of the album she wanted to make. She didn't feel compelled to make anything during the hiatus until now so you can definitely tell a lot of time was put into it you know she didn't make any concessions yeah no and i think i read something where she had been working on this her single honey and obviously the title track of the album for like years now that she's been trying to perfect it so she puts a lot of work in into this and i think it shows there's a lot of, of detail um, within the beats and I, th- I actually probably thought honey was my favorite song on the album just because it's I felt like it was like a, a much warmer sound and it kind of brought in that, that 
like two thirds of the album where it starts to pick up, even though I think it ends, I forgot what the name of the last song is. I forgot to write it down, but kind of ends on a lower note. I felt like, but um, I thought like honey and then, like the three songs after it, one of them was the one you said um, uh, between the lines and then uh, missing you, I think was also near the end. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but those were the songs that stood out to me the most. And yeah, Rob, I don't think there's anything we can really say about Robin. That's going to blow anyone's mind. She's, quality pop and that's um you know in an artistic way and that's something you really can't say about a lot of pop stars at this point so she's worth listening for anyone that likes music and just appreciates um i think good songwriting and uh interesting uh album development 